again But it's the only way you're ever gonna learn You look back and it's all in the past Good evening and welcome to NUFC Matters with me, Steve Ray. That is Monday night and it means I'm joined by Holly Blades, the infamous, the famous, the what do you want to call her, Holly Blades. I think uh, you uh, had a, a busy, busy week, haven't you? Yeah, I have, Steve. Uh, I wouldn't quite say I'm famous, you know, but uh, yeah, it's been a busy week. It's been a great week. And we've had so much support from the Newcastle United fan base. So once again, from me, thanks to everyone that sent lovely messages. They're massively appreciated. Yeah, I mean, look, it's not easy to organise a protest. And, you know, especially one which isn't in your you know backyard. It, it was in London. And, and, and no, you're, you're 300, you know, 300 miles away. And, and you're trying to organise Newcastle United fans to meet not only at Parliament Square, but to go to the Downing Street and to go to... Uh, to the Premier League as well. Um, how did you find the whole experience? I know that you were obviously part of a, a working committee, but how did you find the whole experience? The whole experience was really, really good. Of course, there's moments when you start to worry and think maybe it might not work. But once we got to London, it was better than I ever imagined it would have been. Um, we had like 300 people down there, almost 300 um, when we were down in the street. And it was just fantastic, really. And I think everyone did the club and the city really, really proud. We were all spreading the same message, a message that's really important and that we, we need to hammer home. Um, and I, I think it, it did make a big impact. And the most important thing is it got people talking and it's keeping this story relevant. It's keeping it in the media, which then leads on to putting more pressure onto the Premier League because they can constantly see the headlines and stuff on social media and in the news. So they know we're not going away anytime soon and we will fight for this club. And I, I, honestly, I couldn't have been happier with the turnout of the protest. It was fantastic. Was there anything that, you know, you felt could have been better? Was there, was there anything that, that let you down on the day, do you think? On the day, um, you know, I wouldn't say so. There was things that maybe you think we could have planned that more, but I think it actually worked out best with it not being heavily structured on the day. I think it just worked out perfectly because everything that was said wasn't planned. It was just said from the heart. It was said just as a passionate Newcastle fan speaking for the club, speaking about the club that we love and talking about the future that we all want and deserve massively. Um, and I, I just, yeah, honestly, I don't think it could have went any better if we tried. And everybody that was down there deserves so much credit. And even the people that were just helping us spread the message on social media, they deserve a lot of credit too, because everyone played a part. What about the media coverage? What did you make of that? The media coverage again was really, really good. Um, we had a lot of people down there, uh, especially local media coverage. They were excellent. Even some more international people. Talk Sport have been brilliant. Um, we had Politics Joe. They were great. There were so many people, I can't name them all, that were fantastic. I know Sky Sports took a lot of flack for not um, reporting maybe as much as they could have and they didn't have anyone down there at the protest. Thankfully today, the, I have spoke to Sky Sports and they have put something out there, which is really, really good to see. And I'm very happy that they have done that. So I think now we can rightfully praise them after they've had so much criticism. But definitely, I think um, overall, the media coverage has been really, really good. And everyone's been very supportive of the protest. And I think so many people can see that this has been such a hard time for Newcastle United fans. And they'll, they'll feel sorry for us in a way. And I think they now realise that, you know, these people, they deserve some sort of answers because we, we've just been kept out in the dark for so, so long now. And it's just getting a joke, to be honest. Yeah, it was even support from a, a fan from another club, wasn't it, when you went up to the Premier League? Yeah, yeah, there was, um, which was brilliant. We had a fan that was in a like a flat opposite the Premier League and he put the flags up on, on his balcony on the flat so that they could be seen better, which was brilliant. And I think that just proves that this isn't just a Newcastle United issue. It's something that does affect the whole of football. It's important that the fans are more involved. I think that's something that needs to happen in the future of football because so far it's controlled fully by a group of wealthy individuals who I'm not sure even understand what football means to people, to the average person. I don't think they understand how passionate people are about the game. And from all clubs' points of view, even the big six clubs, I think they all need to stand up and say, we deserve more of a voice as fans in this and we deserve to know what's happening. We want transparency with all cases, not just Newcastle's case. Of course, that's what we targeted, but I think it, it does go wider than Newcastle. 
I know we've got to say a few thank yous. We've got to say a big thank you to, to Q Tech, John and yeah. Q Tech. I mean, he was he was massively inspirational in in pulling the bus together and giving everybody a hand. I mean, it's not easy organising a bus, you know, in normal circumstances, but to then try and organise one during COVID. But then, um, you know, obviously the guys in London as well, who you know, obviously you were working heavily with, like throughout the week to try and get things sorted. They they sorted the logistics out, the new you know the new the way around, and obviously just. Little things like sorting insurance out and sorting out the fact, you know, that you can't just rock up at Downing Street and, you know, hand stuff in. But, you know, the fact that, you you know, you had to, you know, to pre-warn Downing Street that you were going to get permission. There was there's almost like a list of 40 things that you had to have ticked off before you could even do what you wanted to do on Friday. Yeah, there certainly is. There's so many things that people don't even realise that has to be done to organise a protest. And we made sure all of that was covered and everyone pulled together brilliantly to organise it all. And like you said, John deserves a massive shout out because he organised the bus, of course. He um, made a lot of the videos and the promotional stuff as well. He was a massive, massive help. But so was everyone that was involved in the group. And I think everybody deserves praise and praise and of course all the people that traveled down as well it's such a massive effort you know on a friday a six hour coach journey like almost 300 miles it's absolutely phenomenal yeah no it definitely was and it was good to see other people you know having a chance to put their their views forward i mean there was a few notable faces there was chris of course uh, uh who's part of our worldwide team uh, speaking to uh, national radio station but uh, yeah a lot of people you know putting themselves forward you obviously did uh, you know we saw chris there but i saw probably at least six or seven other people who were speaking to different media outlets and and giving the point across and like you say politics joe in particular had covered a wide range of people who were there so Great to hear lots of different people and different voices. And I think Damien probably deserves special mention. He travelled from Norwich to Newcastle to get the bus to go down to London, to go back to Newcastle, to go back to Norwich to go to the, you know, to the protest. There was so many people made a big sacrifice on what essentially was a working day. Yeah, they did. It was absolutely brilliant. And I think that just shows you how passionate Newcastle United fans are and how much this means to them, this takeover. It's right in front of our eyes. It's the best chance we'll ever get as Newcastle fans. And we would become an absolutely unstoppable force in football. It would totally transform the game. It really would. Um, and I think a lot of people realise that now. And we need to do the best we can to help get this deal over because I can't stress like how important it is. That we end up getting this takeover because if we are stuck under the current regime I, I dread to think what will happen to the club it'll be awful but i don't even need to reiterate that but definitely the newcastle fans did themselves proud once again because the, the just the k the showed up they made a difference and it's been well publicized which is fantastic and of course i think that hasn't gone unnoticed by the buyers you know amanda stavely and mia dad i think that's definitely been picked up by them which is fantastic and of course, it was great to see all different fans getting their voices. There was some that obviously I know through like the shows and things, but other fans that I've never met before that all had brilliant opinions and they all got their ideas across. And you could just see the passion, everyone. It was great. And I think everyone just spoke really, really well and, and echoed the passion that Newcastle supporters constantly have. What was it like for you handing the letter in, you know, first of all, at Downing Street? I mean, you know, that that in itself must have been a, a, a bit of a shock. And then given that impromptu speech and then having to go to the Premier League and, and, and handing another one in. I mean, has it had time to sink in what you've actually done, Holly? No, it hasn't. Honestly, it really hasn't. Um, I think I'm still in a bit of a, a whirlwind. Like at the moment, it just feels so surreal since Friday. Everything's been a little bit crazy. Like my phone's never blown up as much in my life. It's been... Honestly, like I can't even put it into words how crazy it's been. But handing the letter into um, Downing Street, it, it was on the spot. Like you said, I wasn't ex expecting it to do it there and then. And then I gave that speech, which again wasn't planned. It was just off the cuff. I just did it. Um, but I think, I think honestly, it worked out the best way doing it like that because everything that I said was just purely from 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 the heart. You know, it was just how I feel as a Newcastle supporter. Um, and. and and, and, and just stressing the fact that we need someone to help us now. We've done so much. We've came so far. And yet we still can't get the basic answers that we deserve. So just asking for that is some is so important because we need someone to help us out here. You know, we can't do everything. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was massive and I was really, really um happy with how it how it went and everyone was brilliant, so supportive. And then again when I handed the letter at the Premier League, you know, it was a similar reception. It was it was brilliant. So you know, uh, the letters, of course, we know that um, Downing Street didn't end up actually getting the letter, which we now have sent to them. 
um, separately because they weren't able to get it in person. But just making that impact, I think, made the same thing. And the police officer outside of the Premier League headquarters did kindly deliver the letter for us since we weren't able to. So that was massive. And the Metropolitan Police were brilliant. Yeah, no, they were. And they, uh, they also made a comment after the event to say, well done to Newcastle fans uh, for behaving themselves and doing so well, you know, at the protest. They were very impressed. So, um, you know, all round, you know, pats on the back for everybody. Well done. Uh, it was a long, long day, but uh, I'm pleased to say that it went without any trouble. We got our message across loud and clear and the support on social media was absolutely superb. So thank you to everybody who, you know, for whatever reason, couldn't get down there, but who uh, lent the support. And um, me, just as an observer, I thoroughly enjoyed the, the day. It was lovely to meet a lot of people who uh, watch the show. So um, if you're watching tonight, good evening. It was nice to meet you. And, um, you know, thanks for all your kind words and all your support. Some uh, some heartwarming stories, some heartbreaking stories as well, which I won't go into uh, because those are personal to me and the people who I spoke to. But, um, yeah, just amazing uh, to meet you all. And uh, thanks for all your support. And, you know, rest assured that the NUFC Matters platform will, uh, will continue, uh, you know, for the next uh, season. So enjoy, uh, enjoy this season and see what happens beyond that but um yeah great day uh fantastic day and um as i say let's hope that that sinks in and well done to sky sports uh, i felt a little bit sorry for pete graves and, and for keith downey getting a bit of stick on twitter i mean you know the, there was a golf game uh called the open going on which keith was covering i mean he was covering it all week um, he did organise a camera crew to go down and, and, and pete graves of course had some kind of family situation going on but yeah look it's not too little, too late. They've done something today. It's up there. Um, Holly was interviewed again, and uh, you know gave her gave her views, and it's up there on the Sky Sports website now. So, I think it got good coverage. I really do. And big shout out to the likes of Metro Radio, uh, Talk Sport, and um, you know, of course, ITV. Simon O'Rourke sent a film crew down uh, from London uh, to cover it, and the BBC. Mark Tulip got involved. So ultimately, all the people who I've dealt with over the years. Uh, made sure that there was some level of, of coverage, and uh, that's that's all you can ask for. The big the big thing that happened on the day, of course, was Amanda Staveley was interviewed on on Talk Sport, and this was just prior uh, to the bus arriving in London and you going down to Parliament Square with everybody. Um, what did you make of what Amanda had to say on the radio? It, it, it appears that she was asked to go on and do a pre-record, but they, uh, they they then put her live on air, which I don't think she realised and um, until it was too late. Uh, but I thought, wow, that she had a Kevin Keegan moment. She certainly put Simon Jordan in, a, uh, in his place. Yeah, that's literally, you've just read my mind. That's what I thought it was like a Kevin Keegan moment. It was one of those moments where it was just, it was just pure, like, you know, it was just, it was just honesty from it. It was her raw feelings and, and I think she's brilliant. Every time you hear her speak, you can just tell how much she loves the club and how keen she is to come in and own this club. And I can't speak highly enough of her. Every time I hear her speak, she, she never fails to amaze us because they speak about the club like they've had an affiliation with it for years. They, they speak the same as any supporter and it's brilliant to hear. I've never actually heard a, a potential owner even of a club speak about the, a football club in the way that they do. It's fantastic. And I think the timing on the day was perfect because obviously she did her interview on Talk Sport and then we were down at Parliament straight after. So that was just great the way it worked out and that gave us a bit of weight to the protest as well. But Amanda Staveley, you can, you can just tell how badly she wants to be at Newcastle United and how badly she wants to take us forward with her ideas, which I'm massively looking forward to. And again, it just fills you with even more excitement for the day when the takeover does eventually go through because I believe it will. And Amanda does, you know, she said it will go through and I think everyone's got the confidence. And when it does go through, I think we've just got an absolutely unbelievable future ahead. I think we'll be unstoppable. Yeah, uh, me too. It was nice to hear Amanda come out and, and finally say what, uh, you know, in a roundabout way, me, Liam, uh, Steve, Mitch and Keith have been saying for the last 15 months, the PIF, uh, the Saudis, of course, PCP and the Rubens were all still at the table and it was nice to hear those words uttered by Amanda. It felt as if it was a huge weight lifted up our shoulders because we've always yeah. known that they were there. But um, yeah, incredible. Um, I'd love to see them as owners. Let's hope that uh, there is movement in the next couple of weeks and um, we will watch, of course, with interest. Joe Walker, uh, it was great to see you, mate. Uh, of course, tuned Tipster on a Friday night. He says, evening, Steve and Holly just wanted everybody to know how incredible Holly was in London on Friday. Amazing stuff. Keep going, Holly. Don't ever give up being new. Fantastic day. 
had by all and mad mag mark says well done holly and everyone involved with the protest in london last week you are truly a credit to the fan base in this fight for the takeover so lots of similar messages coming in like that holly yeah, it's brilliant. I met Joe, obviously, in London, and he was lovely as well. So lovely to meet you, Joe. And everyone's just been so nice. The messages are amazing. But I think we did this for all Newcastle supporters to get the future that we deserve. And it's not about individual praise. It doesn't matter who's speaking up there. It just matters about what message we're sharing and that we're representing the city and the club the way it deserves to be represented. And I feel like we managed to do that as a group. So... I'm just very pleased and I hope everyone else is as well and by the seams of it, everyone is, which is fantastic and I hope we all get the end the end game that we all deserve as Newcastle fans because we don't deserve, we, uh, we deserve success more than anyone else, sorry, because the amount of things we've been through through the years and stayed loyal to the club, it's, it's honestly outstanding when you think of it selling out in the championship and every game under this toxic regime that's been for 14 years now and yet still everyone stays so loyal to the club so it's just fantastic. Mark Anderson says, Holly should be proud of herself. She's a credit to her family. Uh, Lily, good evening. She says, hi, guys. Think everyone did the club proud on Friday. Holly, you were amazing. Tom Lynch says, people who don't do social media are taking notice. My mum, who's a season ticket holder, who doesn't do social media, was very impressed with you and your speech, Holly. Well done for pushing this forward. So it's great to see Keith Rowe. Well done uh, for Friday, Holly. Lots of lots of positivity coming through for you, which uh, for me is is well deserved. Roger Cook, big respect uh, to Holly as well. So thanks for your comments, and uh, I know Holly really appreciates them, and uh, she's been busy uh, replying to a lot of people, I guess, on their uh, social media all uh, weekend as well. Mark says uh, we couldn't have had better weather for the protest too. It was a privilege to be part of it all. Uh, we must have walked for six miles there. Uh, we did 19,000 steps, I think, mate. I've uh, got one of those apps on my phone. So, uh, <laughs> Kenny says, we deserve to be heard and the corruption needs to be exposed. Um, yeah, just lots of uh, positivity there. Mark also says, hi, Steve, some of us weren't uh, lucky <laughs> enough to get the train. Yeah, I'm, I'm an old man, mate. I've got an excuse. Uh, plus, uh, <laughs> I wanted to get down there early. So, um, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Um, anyway, let's talk... Uh, a little bit about football. Um, of course, we were down at York yesterday and uh, we made the, the journey down on the train as you and your dad. And uh, we had a great time, didn't we? Uh, apart from the football. Yeah, we did. But I think that's uh, usually the same story when you're following Newcastle. I always go to the game. I predicted 5-0 before the game. And then I think reality kicked in that I support Newcastle. Um, and we ended up getting beat 1-0. But honestly, the outrage was like... A bit much, I thought, on Twitter. Everyone was um, fuming that we got beaten. I can understand, of course, York's a non-league side and we definitely should have won won that game. But at the end of the day, it's the first pre-season friendly and we got to run out. We've had COVID problems. We had a couple of youngsters in the side and I don't think we were horrendous. Um, so I just, in my opinion, I think we'll, we'll see how we're going to Doncaster. I mean, we could absolutely thrash Doncaster and then everyone's opinion will change. But... Yeah, the football wasn't the greatest. There was Kellen Watts, mind, uh, the, the young youngster that was in the squad. I thought he was really, really good. He deserved some recognition. Matt Ritchie and Jacob Murphy were brilliant. Um, apart from that, I think everyone pretty much went unnoticed. But like we say, there's plenty of time. And hopefully we just don't play like that at the start of the season because then I'll be worried. Yeah, I mean, there was, you know, you know, you blow the cobwebs out in pre-season. That's what I'm going to start with. Um, mm -hmm. You know, from, from my perspective, it was, you know, it was a typical pre-season friendly. There was so many substitutions. It was, you know, it was unbelievable, um, you know, and, and that's what that's what happens. People get run out. Um, I mean, Joe Linton, you know, I, I had to give him 10 games at the start of last season uh, before I was before I was going to start having a pop. But He's the only Brazilian who can't play in 28 degree heat because I personally did not think there was anything wrong with him. Um, they say it was a thigh injury, but off he went, and you know, you know, Dwight Gale came on. Um, I, I don't know that 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 really did disappoint me. Um, plus points, good to see Callum Wilson in the number nine shirt. Um, you know, we saw him uh, make his debut, and that good to see there was no. A reaction, I guess, to the injury that uh, he sustained at the end of last season, which ruled him out for the last few games. Um, downsides, Steve Bruce's cap. Um, 
and what on earth he was doing whenever the team came off the pitch was not talking at the players and, and maybe he's giving them some encouragement and asking them whether, you know, this was working or that was working or whether it was anything, you know, anything. And I just thought that was a bit bizarre. I didn't like the cap whatsoever. Um, a lot of people refer to him as Donald Trump uh, on the day. Uh, good to see Langley get a run out. Um, although he he will be disappointed about the goal that he conceded because... Anybody who's six foot, six foot seven should not be getting beaten as easily as that with a loop and header. Uh, but other than that, I thought he was OK. Um, I did think Murphy had a good game. Um, and, and I think all of that pre-season training that he's put in over the last few weeks, um, you know, ahead of everybody else, uh, certainly, certainly showed he looked the fittest. Matt Ritchie was superb uh, again. And I mean, I know we're only playing York, uh, but Matt Ritchie wants to win every game. Um, he, he, every challenge was was you know full was it was a full challenge. Um, I just you know it was just a typical preseason friendly. It was disappointing to lose it, um, but in reality, I would rather lose all the preseason games as long as we will beat West Ham in that first game of the season. Um, you know, it's it's it, it's all about finding the level. I don't know what you thought, Holly, but I felt personally that it was almost back to those pre Graham Jones days where the corners. The free kicks, there was nothing there which had any kind of originality about them. The the corners were just being floated in aimlessly. The free kicks, you know, the, the, the weren't the weren't you know there was nothing original about them. It just it just all felt a little bit too much like you know pre pre Graham Jones days. And, and and I know Jones is on holiday, but I think the quicker that Graham Jones gets back, maybe he's the better. You know. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think you could tell Graham Jones wasn't there on that day. It was exactly like the first half of last season when we were struggling, when we thought we were going to be relegated until Graham Jones came in and managed to turn it around. And it just reminds you of how important Graham Jones is going to be next season, because without him, I think there's a massive chance we could go down again, which is just like... We don't even want to have to be in this position. It's so frustrating, but it's it's nothing that we're not used to, unfortunately. Um Steve Bruce, I think he's admitted himself he's not really into tactics. He's not that's not his game, you know. And I think I think he's been open about that. Um, whereas Graham Jones is and in the Premier League and at this level, it that needs tactic tactics to be in place, you know. And this wasn't even a Premier League game, which is even more worrying. But yeah, the, the corners were very poor. I think that um Ryan Fraser, he took some corners and I thought he was really, really poor again. Um I'm just I'm not impressed with Ryan Fraser personally I don't feel like he's got a chance for Newcastle I'd rather get rid of him now um that's just my opinion but honestly like I just I don't see what he adds to this side I don't think he wants to be here I don't think he wants to play for Newcastle and I don't think he's wanting to play here since the day he signed and I don't understand why he did sign in the first place um but yeah no tactics whatsoever it was very much just hitting hope and it was like Steve Bruce was playing for a clean sheet against York, which is just ridiculous. I don't understand what he was doing there. But And then again, like you said, Steve, not not motivating the players when they came for a drinks break. He didn't say anything. And when you're playing like that against York, you'd think he'd have something to say, but clearly not. I mean, that wasn't, you know, I, people sometimes say, well, you've, yeah, you've just caught him on the, on the, you know, on the hop there. I mean, I, I like to take a few photographs when I was at the match. I mean, obviously, we had a good seat, so it was possible. I, I don't do that every game, but I just thought it was nice for, for fans watching the show tonight to be able to see a few images. But I got that one and I, I did tweet that yesterday and, and straight away people were picking at the bits, uh, you know, saying he looked like he was off for a game of golf. Even John from QTech, who was down with us at the match, was saying he looked like he was having a game of golf. Um, some people saying he looked like Donald Trump. Some people pointing to the MKM thing, saying it, it was Mackham. Once a Mackham, always a Mackham. But it was he didn't look as if he was motivating the team. He, he looked as if he was wanting to be elsewhere. It didn't it? Didn't look that positive. But you know, I mean, look, for me, uh, the, the big thing is the West Ham game. We've just got to get off to a good start. Um, that is, if the trade goer hasn't gone through by then. So it'll it will it will be interesting to see what happens and. Um, we need the keeper crisis to sort itself out as well, because I don't think Langley will be. Will you know? I don't think Langley, you know, Langley will have to play for the first team this season. But um, you know, the quicker we've got a goalkeeper back in the net who can do something, the better. It gives you a little bit more confidence. What did you think of the back four? Um, the, you know, the, the players have played. You've already mentioned Kel Watts. I think he, he he played well. But I mean, the likes of Dummett, Lascelles. Um, you know, the only person who didn't play yesterday in the back four was Clark, wasn't it? But what did what did you make of the the defence? 
it was okay. I think the defence is always pretty solid. Um, it was okay. Like, I can't really say much more about it. Obviously, we only conceded the one goal. I think York had the better chances, but just to, I just you know what I just say five out of ten steady Eddie kind of defense Fernandez I thought he was all right until he came off um Dummett, it's great to see him on because I think he always puts in a good shift but overall I'd just say it was just basically just an average performance from them what was the standout for me because of course we've never seen him in the in the first team um very much and he's in the under 23s he came in and I don't think he looked out of place whatsoever um, I'd definitely be giving him a chance next season if things stay the same, even just to bring him off the bench because I think there's something in, in him that he could end up uh, being part of the first team in the near future. Yeah. Uh, Alan Thompson says, we all know Amanda Rubin and the Saudis are in it for the money, but they want what we want. That's success. And success means more money for owners. Win-win all round. Still praying for the takeover. Paul thinks everyone should get a grip because we got beat off Orient 6-1 a few years ago. Um, there has been a bit of a uh, an overreaction, hasn't it? But that is social media to getting beat off York 1 0. Yeah, that has, but it you know, it always happens every time Newcastle get beat. There's this uproar about an hour after full time, and I just say try and stay off social media, I'll be honest. But I think it's just a case of everyone kind of winds each other up because they go, oh, Did you notice this player? Did you notice that player? This chance that was missed? And it just all gets a bit uh, a bit crazy. And I think people. They were acting like we were playing for like some sort of final, some people, but it's literally a friendly. It doesn't matter. I'll just say, just calm down. If we play like that in the season, then have a rant and kick off. But at the minute, just give them the benefit of the doubt and hope that they get into form next Friday. Mark Henderson keeps trying to take us off track. He's uh, still going on about this bus trip and uh, the, the train journey. He says, you're an older man. I'm older than you, mate. Mark, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mark. I just... Uh, I just... Those little comforts uh, for me were, 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 were very important if I was going to be on top form. Simon Cox says, all about fitness. Only downside, the young lad didn't get keep a clean sheet. Uh, and yes, Holly Watts was fantastic. I would agree. I'd love to have seen uh, Langley keep a, a clean sheet. But he learned from it. He learned from the experience. That's what the friendlies uh, are all about. Belly says, could the Rubens and Amanda get another investor to replace the Saudis if the current takeover bid fail? I don't think that'll happen, Belly. Um, I think it's Saudis are bust, unfortunately. Uh, you know, I think we all look at the Rubens, though, and go, they could probably afford it. But I only get the feeling that Jamie um, is the one who wants to, you know, to take part in the football club situation. I'm not sure his dad and his brother are as keen. Um, so, you know, perhaps, you know, it will mean that we're going to have to try and find somebody else who would want to buy the club. But it's not over yet. Um, you should all be a little bit more uh, confident, I think, after hearing a man from me, Dad. And we just have to hope that the legal wheels turn the way that um, you know Keith has talked about in the last few Fab Four shows. And if those legal wheels turn the way that we want them to turn, then it's uh, you know it's it's only going to go one way. Let's hope so. Uh, Bede says Joe Linton going off injured was the highlight of the game. How are Bede? You, you don't want to wish your players injured. I, I know what you mean. I know you can be frustrating. Obviously, Shelby's injured as well. Um, I, I did uh, I did retweet that today, um, Holly. There was uh, Miles Starforth from the Shields Gazette had, had, had announced that Shelby was going to be out for a few weeks. And um, the people who commented, I mean, there were some hilarious comments. But yeah, Shelby's certainly not the fans' favourite player. No, he's not. And I think it's such a shame because I think in the championship and kind of the earlier days, I think he was all right. I think he did well. It was a good pass of the ball and stuff, but now he's just lost his legs and I don't think he's got a good mentality either. Um, he says that he wants to stay with Newcastle and he wants to retire at the club. Well, he's certainly not playing like a guy that wants to stay at the club. He just looks disinterested and like he couldn't care less. I don't think I've seen him run for like two, three years. Like I don't, he doesn't go in for 50-50 challenges. There's nothing about the guy that you can say is good, unfortunately. And it's a shame because I'd like to see Shelby do well, but I think we need to to let him go now it's time to move on but it's just I think he's on big wages so it's who would take him on because he's certainly not selling himself well definitely not a big shout out to our sponsor Spider VPN Google Spider VPN they come up at the top of the search list uh, to protect your computer protect your passwords protect everything on your computer Google Spider VPN main sponsors now for the last few months big shout out to the lads thank you very much for your support and also to skipsandbins.com telephone 0800 25 45 25 3 email inquiries at skipsandbins.com website www.skipsandbins.com easy contract free and pay as you go waste collection big thank you to them for being on board for the last few months as well and to jab signature uh, who make all of our flyers and to john last but by no means least at qtech q 
qtechshop.co.uk, who will be launching a few new T-shirts this week. So keep an eye out on nufcmatters.com. Uh, that is the website for you. We're uh, introducing the London Calling and the Over the Wall T-shirts this week. Uh, keep your eyes peeled, some snazzy T-shirts uh, for the forthcoming season. If you haven't subscribed, please do so by clicking the Newcastle Legends logo in the bottom right-hand corner. Another 100 subscribers this week, so uh, please join uh, the ever-growing list and uh, click the like button, which is the little thumb to like the video. Click share to share to your social media and drop into the comment box to speak to like-minded Newcastle fans. Always good to chat with different people. We've got a very friendly bunch in there. Don't forget, the Match Day Bucket is still operational throughout pre-season. NUFC fans, foodbank.co.uk is the website you need for that. And you can make a small donation or a big donation into that bucket for the food bank. And uh, that is totting up very, very nicely. And of course, you still have time to be entered by making a donation in the prize draw for this wonderful watch. Uh, and the winner for that watch will be announced at the pool night, which is creeping closer and closer. Friday, the 6th of August. Uh, and that is at Spot White in Stowell Street. And that, again, is raising funds for the NUFC Fans Food Bank. So uh, plenty going on and uh, a couple of events coming up as well over the next few weeks. But I must plug this one uh, down at Bobix, me and Liam Kennedy, Thursday, the 5th of August, which is the night before the pool night, 7.30. All proceeds are going to the food bank. Uh, so please contact www.bobix.com and uh Come along, give us some support, and uh, we'll be talking Newcastle United, of course. Uh, I do want to give a big shout-out as well to uh, Steve Cross from Scunthorpe, who was at York yesterday. Now, Steve, uh, years ago, many, many moons ago, when I did the very first fanzine um, that I did, which was called The Mighty Quinn, and I used to sell that outside the ground many years ago. I know some of you used to buy it. Well, Steve was the guy in Scunthorpe, who I keep referring to, who used to do the photocopying. So he used to print the 500 copies. He used to fold them and he used to staple them together down in uh, down in Scunthorpe. But it was great to see you, Steve. Uh, big shout out to you, mate. Uh, glad you and the family are well and uh, you're doing so well. Just a pity that the, the one friendly you decided to go to um, wasn't exactly the best. But uh, you've been a Newcastle fan long enough to know that that's what usually happens. And uh, Shambles Travel, uh, Doncaster bus is just about full. Um, so, um, still take the number down, 077914, um, and if you want to go to Burton, she's taking bookings now. So, uh, 077-914-1779. Contact Amanda. She is definitely going to Burton. They're deciding on Rotherham as we speak, uh, but they will definitely be going to Burton, Albion. So, if you're looking for a bus to go down there, then give Amanda a ring. Stick it in your phone. Um, always handy to go with Shambles Travels. Uh, they, they do go to every away game in the Premier League. Uh, so please give that number a, a save and make sure you get along to uh, the games with Amanda. Always, always a good trip. OK, um, let's look at another topic, uh, which is uh, trending on Twitter at the minute, and that is Andy Carroll. Um, and I've got to be honest, I took a big intake, a breath and a gulp when I saw that he was trending on Twitter. Um, but thankfully, he's gone. He's not staying at Newcastle. Um, I've got nothing against Andy personally, but... If Andy Carroll was staying at the club, I think it would be a dead cert that the takeover wasn't going to go through. He's leaving the club because he wants to try and get more game time. Steve Bruce announced it yesterday at York City. Um, finally confirmed on the media today. Trending on Twitter. Lots of uh, funny things being shown on Twitter at this moment about Andy's uh, last reign at the club. Overall, though, Holly, he was he was great when he was bursting through. Um Eventually, you know, we we sold him. We got thirty-five million pound. There was uproar. Probably turned out to be a great deal because of his injury record. But um, you know, what's your thoughts on on Andy Carroll? You know, finally leaving Newcastle United. I think it was time for Andy Carroll to leave. I can understand why the club brought him back. I think it was to get fans on side. There was a lot of upset, obviously, when Steve Bruce came in that season after Rafa Benitez. And then they brought Andy Carroll in, you know, hoping that the fans would take to him because he was a guy that was well-liked at Newcastle. He's a Geordie. And I think it did work to an extent. But he, he, to be fair to him, he didn't get the chance that he deserved. Steve Bruce never hardly played him. He didn't give him that chance. And I think there's times where we could have used him, but we didn't. So 
he was just wasted and he just sat on the bench and just picked up wages and didn't really do anything. So it's definitely time for him to leave. I think it was the wrong move bringing him back because I think in some ways it ruins the memories that we had of him back in like 2009 when he used to play. So it's, it's just, it's, it's very unfortunate. I think that that's kind of been tarnished a little bit by his second spell at the club. It's just a shame that we brought him back. I don't think we should have done that. But the first spell was still brilliant. Looking back, yeah, 35 million was probably a good price for him. Although I think if he'd stayed at Newcastle, his career would have been different. He's someone that I like. He'll still have a lot of respect from Newcastle fans. But now it's certainly time to move on. And I think he will be retiring in a few years because I just I don't think he's half the player that he once was. Yeah, I mean, look, from, from our perspective, yeah, I still say that it was a publicity stunt. Yeah. Um, I don't think he came back for any other reason than that. I think he was probably hoping, um, I think he was probably hoping essentially for, you know, a, a coaching job of some kind at, at Newcastle, but that hasn't worked out either. Um, you know, ultimately for him, um, you know, he got a, a you know, got a couple of seasons paid day, but um I just felt it was a strange move. I I, I really did. Um, I wish him all the best and you know, from from my perspective. Um, I hope he finds a club that he can and play his career out at, but I just felt it was a publicity stunt. Okay, um, number four. Four is my lucky number. I've got to be honest. It's a, it's a shirt number I wore in Sunday, in Sunday League. Um, a lot of people talking about it tonight. Uh, Jeff says, our number four was amazing. All over the place, covering every blade. All over the pitch. Um, a lot of people saying that the, the, the strip has grown. Mark says the strip has grown on him. Um... What's your what's your thoughts on the strip now that you've seen it in the flesh? The player's different is the player's version is different to the fans version of the shirt, and I don't like the player's version as much because I don't know if anyone noticed, but there's like little dots underneath the numbers and underneath the arms as well. I don't know if anyone saw that or if it was just me, but there's loads of white dots, and I think it looks really silly. I don't like it, uh, so I think the fans version of the shirt is a lot lot nicer. Um, I prefer it, but. I do still like the strip. I think it's very reminiscent of the 95-96 season strip. I still I still do like it. But, yeah, I think the number four is driving everyone mad because I didn't see it and then people started pointing it out. And I just wish people had shut up about it and not said anything because now all we can see is this number four. Um, but you never know. It could be Newcastle's next number nine. It could be our lucky number and we could have a great season. I, I'm not confident of that, but, you know, there's, there's always the chance. Uh, we've got breaking news, and it's not the news uh, that we were hoping for, to be honest, Holly. And it's mm -hmm. uh, it's big news with regards to the takeover. Um, usually, it's the kind of stuff that breaks on a um, on, on a Tuesday night. Uh, but I will read what has come out tonight. Keith Downey has put this out. The club have, have issued a statement as well. Uh, Newcastle United's takeover hearing with the Premier League has been adjourned to twenty twenty two due to issues with the disclosure of evidence. Arbitration set to take place early next year now. And uh, the second tweet that Keats put out, the parties attended a hearing today in the case between Newcastle United and the Premier League. The main hearing of the arbitration has regrettably now been adjourned until early 2022 due to issues with disclosure of evidence. So, Keith was right. There was going to be a big announcement. And from our perspective, that is not the news we wanted to hear, Holly. No, not at all. Um, that's, well, that's um, certainly putting a, a damp on things. Um, honestly, like, I, that's well and truly hit me by surprise. That's so, so disappointing. I actually feel really upset about that because I think my my confidence within a matter of minutes has went from here to here. Um, w will the Saudi stay here for another year? <sighs> like, honestly, like, I'm just, I'm literally, I can't even describe how I feel right now. It's an awful feeling. I think that's almost as bad as the same the takeovers off because th there's no, <sighs> they've, they've been here 15 months already. They're going to have to wait another 12. It's a complete and utter joke. Like, we are going to be stuck with Steve Bruce, this squad, Mike Ashley, Lee Charley for another year in the Premier League. Think They don't see a problem with this. Newcastle could go down and this takeover is most likely going to fall through now. And we will, honestly, mark my words, if things don't stay the same, 
if things stay the same, sorry, we will go relegated. We'll stick in the championship and we won't get back up because there's no hope. There's no chance for us to be saved now. Mike Ashley is done with the club. He doesn't want to be here anymore. He's proved that now. He's clearly done. So there's no investment from him. The players don't care. The manager, well, you, you know, we've said all we need to say about him, but that's um, that's a very, very, very hard thing to take because I, I just I can't see this happening now, I'm afraid. Well, the cat case is something which, of course, Spenny has pointed out, and it's something which, you know, Keith will be able to let us know about, I'm sure, in due course. Um, the cat case is the key, guys, trust me. I would say yes, I would agree with that. I mean, this is the arbitration, and the cat case was always the, the, the key, and, and Keith did say that there would be some movement with the cat case this week. So... Let's see what happens in the next two days. I think is 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 the thing to is the thing to look at. Look, it's it's a, it's been an emotional roller coaster for everybody, um, and I think people have just seen that with the way Holly's reacted to the news that's just come through. It's 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 so frustrating um, for Newcastle United fans to be in a position where we still do not know what the hell is going on, and the Premier League are dragging their feet and and and, and attempting to. To put a you know a spanner in the works time and time again, but I do feel that the cat case is is going to play a big part in this, and that is why Keith Patterson and the lads from NCSL have played a huge part in potentially uh, getting this takeover to go through. So it will be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, the cat case for me, as Rachel Lilly says, let's hope it has more clout. I personally do think it's got more clout. Whether that can be delayed, um, who knows. Life Goal says there is one piece of clarity here. Ashley must now spend money or lose his investment. Mark Bayer says, how can they adjourn after all the delays? It's corrupt. Mike Ashley, take them to court 100%, he is doing that. Chris McCarthy says, let's just face facts, everyone. PIF, Stabley and the Rubin brothers will not wait another year. It looks like we are shopping at Poundland now, which is an absolute disgrace. This could only happen to our club. How the hell can the Premier League get away with this? Says Mark, get the bloody cat case started then. Um, I'm sure it will this week. Spenny Mag, arbitration is compensation case. The cat case is the Premier League we need. Brian H says, well, that's it. We're finished. Might as well chuck it. Saves all the heartache. Let's get on with our lives. I'm done now after 50 years. Uh, the Mags, postponed due to disclosure of evidence. This must be on the Premier League side. Hiding again. Come on, the cat, says Julie Baker. Yes. Uh, Gary Hannon says, if NUFC had just stopped playing football, would that help go against the Premier League for the takeover? Will that work, not work if possible? So many things that people have suggested, which to us all would appear logical. But I think that the Saudis want to come through with flags waving. They want to come through with flags waving. They do not want to go through the back door. They don't want to go through, um, you know, getting something for nothing and then suddenly being percentage holders of a club. They don't want to do that. They want to do the deal the way they want to do it. They've been able to do everything in Formula One the way they wanted to do it. They've been able to invest in boxing the way they've been able to do it. So why shouldn't they be able to buy a football club in the in the Premier League? Uh, why shouldn't they? Billy Trainson, hope a cat case exposes these crooks for the corrupt charlatans they are. Guy Brush uh, says, looking for a silver lining. Maybe this is a way for them to settle without any disclosure and for the Premier to save face. Let's see what unfolds. But you're right, Holly. It's The problem we've got is, you know, is is, is this season. And, it, 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 you know, Mike Ashley's going to have to spend some money. Do you think if this is going to drag on into 2022 that he's going to spend any money? No, no, I think. I think Mike Ashley will well and truly... Um once and for all just give up I think he'll on paper he'll be the owner but he won't actually be the owner because I think he'll just treat the club like it's not his I don't think he'll invest a penny Um, I, I just think we will really really be left to rot and that is terrifying to, to think about actually Um, we've seen it happen to clubs before I mean you look 15 miles down the road to Sunland and what's to say that couldn't happen to us if things don't change Um. And the positivity in the comments is lovely. People saying the cat case, and, and I'd love to think these are all right. But after that news, I just think if they've got the power to do that, then then what's to say they won't stall the other cases? Um, I like I just think there's far too much corruption and things going on that we aren't aware of that is going to massively go in their favour. And the fact that they've they've postponed that a year now, it, it's just. What can you even say about that? It's just, it shows you that Newcastle were like literally 
they're doing anything to keep us out of power and it's so so frustrating and it's so so hurtful and it just makes you even more have even more hatred towards the Premier League. And yes, hate's a strong word, but I do I do actually hate the Premier League because I think what they've done to us over the past year has been absolutely disgraceful. Um, and I don't know how to sleep at night knowing that they're putting one of the, the biggest football clubs in the UK in the position that they are. They don't care. But without football would not be the same if Newcastle slipped away into the lower leagues. It wouldn't be because we've been a force for years. Um and, and everyone knows Newcastle, the iconic black and white stripes, everything. And to think that that could just rot. And I know it sounds dramatic right now, but trust me, if we are stuck with Mike Ashley, because there's no other buyers here, which I think we all know, if the PIF go away after a year, which quite frankly they will because it's a joke, because it could extend it another year after that, um, and we're stuck with Mike Ashley, then that's it. What We really are done. We are totally done. I mean, how do you feel, Steve? I agree with Chris Hall that this is what Keith said, that this would be the best case, the cat case before the arbitration case. Well, now we know that the arbitration case isn't going to happen until next year. So the cat case is key. Uh, or Jordan saying that everything's been for nothing. I, I disagree. I genuinely feel that, you know, this is just a, this is just a little... Uh, a, a little diversion in, in this whole takeover story. I still feel the cat case will play its part, which is what Keith said on Friday when we were down in London. There's going to be some big news this week. Well, he's right. We've had some big news. The arbitration's off till next year. But ultimately, um, let's see what happens with a cat case. Joe Walker says, cat first is good. That's what everyone's, uh, that's what everyone's saying. Uh, Jordan is saying, cancel your season tickets. Don't buy the new strips. Stop listening to Amanda Stavely. It's done. Uh, we'd always share everyone's opinions on here. So, you know, I can't say that you're wrong in what you say. If that's what you want to do, do it. I certainly won't be doing that. Simon Cox says, it's not postponed five months, not a year. It's still very bad. I know life goes as the takeover has been one big delay. We'll all be pushing up daisies by the time there's any accountability. And... Uh, yeah, lots of lots of upset people, lots of angry people, um, and uh, you know we're, I'm sure this will develop over the next few uh, days. And uh, Liam, of course, will be on tomorrow to talk takeover. Um, Lily wants to change uh, tact a little bit and say, uh, "What is your opinion on changing club numbers days after the shirts came out?" Interesting. Obviously, we saw Callum Wilson uh, given the number nine shirt, something which I think most of us felt was the. The right thing to do. Um, we, we all probably wish that that happened last year. Joe Linton now wearing the number seven, but that doesn't do the people any good who um, who essentially, you know, bought shirts in good faith prior to that. I believe the clubs have, have re refunded people or allowed people to get a reprinted shirt, haven't they? Yeah, they have the refunded people for the shirt, which, you know, that's the right thing to do because if people's just bought a shirt for like £65 or whatever, plus the price for printing, then, you, you know, they do deserve a refund because that's not really their fault. Um, the, you know, they probably should have done it before they announced the strip, but it doesn't really surprise us because I think the club's organisation's a mess. Um, but I think it was the right move given Joe Linton, I mean, not Joe Linton, sorry, Callum Wilson, the nine from Joe Linton. I think he's deserved it and he'll wear the shirt with pride and no doubt do really well in it. So it was a smart move. Wrong timing maybe, but at least they've refunded the people. Um, Kenny reckons that this may have been put back by Ashley because the cat case has to be played out first, according to Keith Patterson. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. PIF linked with buying McLaren Formula One team. A joke that the club cannot be bought. I think everybody uh, agrees with that. The Premier and the Big Six are the common enemy of the rest of the the, the league. Yep, Jeff, you're not going to get any arguments from us on that. Honestly, uh, they're knowledge the stuffing. Uh, they're knocking the stuffing out of me. Uh, really, has time to come off Twitter for a bit. I think Paul. Yeah, <laughs> Twitter is a bit of a nightmare when these things happen. Premier League still have no chance. Trust me, says Kirk. Chris says, you know what will happen? We'll wake up tomorrow and hear Bruce has been given a new eight-year deal. <laughs> Don't upset anybody uh, <laughs> any more than that, dear me. Uh, wouldn't it be better to have the cat case first anyway, says Simonitis? Uh, maybe it is a delay tactic by Newcastle to make sure the cat happens first. Could be good news. Lots of people think the same, Holly, uh, that it could be the club doing this. There's no confirmation whether that's true or not, to be fair, but that would make sense. It would make sense. And, you know, like, obviously I've, like, reacted badly to it because it was, like, on the spot. And I think most people, well, a lot of people will feel the same anyway. 
But yes, of course, I don't think it's fully dead in the water. I think Amanda Stavey is very determined and there is other things that could happen. It's just that news of, of hearing that it's been delayed is obviously not something that you want to hear. But if the cat case does go ahead and it, that sorts it, then brilliant. And I could wake up in the morning and no doubt I will and be a lot more positive. It's just the initial reaction, you know. And God knows in the crazy world of Newcastle United, 24 hours could make all the difference. Tomorrow we could be all singing like Amanda Stavely and all this stuff because more news could come out we've just got to wait and see I guess and just hope something happens sooner rather than later because it, it does worry people it's worrying to think of what will happen if this does fall through we're, we're relying on this so much yeah uh sadly Masters and Coach slowing things down so the Saudis pull out we can never pin hopes on a takeover now it's all a pinch of salt stuff says Paul um I'm a dog man at heart but now 100% for the cat <laughs> says Roger Same. Joe says Come on, folks. We've come too far now in Amanda. We trust. Uh, Brian says, Steve, in your heart, what do you think? I still think it'll go through, mate. Um, I'm not going to change my mind just because there's another delay in the road. But um, the longer that it goes on this summer, um, you know, the least chance we have of, of, of making any signings. I, I, I actually spoke to Liam in depth today. We, we sometimes have a chat before the show on a Tuesday. And uh, what I said to him was that, I still can't see this going ahead until later on in the year. But that was my opinion to Liam on a phone call today. And I uh, didn't expect that news today at all. So, uh, yeah, uh, disappointing to hear that. But let's let's wait and see what Keith says. No response from Keith as yet. I have texted him. Uh, be interesting to hear what Keith has had to, had to say. Uh, Holly, don't give the Premier League uh, any satisfaction. Keep your head up, says Julie. Uh, can see how good you are, Steve. I feel your pain. Paul, I'm not. I'm genuinely... I'm genuinely not because that doesn't mean anything. It's just another statement. It's another delay. Um, I genuinely don't feel that it's over yet. So uh, you're misreading me face, I'm afraid, on this. I'm probably putting my concentration face on because of all the messages that are coming through. I'm trying to find some positive ones. <laughs> I'm trying to find something which isn't talking about this news that's come out, uh, to be honest. Adam says, does Mike actually sell ASM for quick cash and put that money into the club? I know he won't invest in the team, but it's a way of getting money. Yeah. I mean, that's been another one that's been mooted. Uh, Willock, of course, the rumours when we were on our way down to London on uh, Friday where the Willock was, you know, was looking potentially a done deal, Holly. Uh, but then there's been rumours over the weekend that, you know, potentially Willock and ASM would both go to Everton. I don't believe Rafa would be interested in ASM. I don't think it's his type of player. Uh, but what's your thoughts on, 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 on all of that? Willock, I think he still will come to the club. Arsenal signed a new midfielder a day. Um, so I think Willock's definitely got a chance to come to the club. I think obviously there's been some type of like problems and stuff, maybe not agreeing on the on the type of contract that they want to give him. But I think we will see him here uh, at the club before the the end of the transfer window. Maybe I think it could be a last minute type of thing. I'm, you know, it might not it might not happen straight away because I think Newcastle tend to do a lot of their business at the last minute. So, but I think he will come back to the club. I think he wants to come back, and I think it'll be a good move for both him and us. Um, and what was the other question? Sorry about the other player. Um, I'm just trying to catch up on text messages from people to see if I can get anything, any, any <laughs> breaking news, any breaking news. But yeah, ASM. That's what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. ASM and Willock. Yeah, ASM. Um, Saint Maximan. I don't think he'll be sold because right now the takeover's still alive, and if uh, Mike Ashley sold Saint Maximan, that would be a massive financial kind of damaging thing to the club and then maybe the Saudis could turn around and then say well we're not going to give you the full price because you've sold a key asset to the club so I don't think that would make sense I think if it's still rolling on into the January window I think I wouldn't be surprised if he left then to be honest because I think St Maximin's uh, publicly and openly said that he wants to do more for his career he doesn't want to just kind of fight relegation every year and I can't blame him for that Rafa Benitez at Everton, I don't think he'd sign him. I don't think he's ever been a Rafa type of player. He hasn't really got the discipline that Rafa kind of looks for in players. And he just doesn't really suit his style of football. So I wouldn't think he'd be going to Everton. But uh, I think he will go in January if nothing changes, but not this window. Mark Bayer says, Cat case could drag out for months. Uh, arbitration was scheduled to last seven to ten days. Uh, it sounds bad, but it may not be, says Tom. We've waited so long, but I'm going to reserve judgment and see how it pans out. Me too. John says, let's wait and see what happens with Cat out in public. A huge clue with regards to where arbitration will go next year. Perhaps sorted before then, save the Premier League being embarrassed. Uh, supporting Newcastle is more stressful than my divorce was, says Rachel. Uh, Mal <laughs> Malcolm oh, says... Uh, do you think Rafa knew this was going to happen? And yeah, Rafa, Rafa just kept these options open. He, the good thing about that, again, and again, we, we'll talk more about this during the week with Liam and with uh, the Fab Four, but um, once again, we did tell you Rafa was coming to Newcastle. 
under Stavely. That was going to be the plan. Uh, but he couldn't he couldn't wait forever. And that's what he said in his press conference yesterday. So um, from my perspective, um, you know, again, we're fully vindicated on the show. We don't feed your lies. We feed your facts as best we can. Um, three Amigos uh, WhatsApp chat, uh, which has got a few more than three in. Uh, but uh, Neil Mitchell is sat with a compliance lawyer from DIFC who says keeping Delaware company um, and um, move the EPL off. And Steve Acey says there's a game being played here, guys. Um, I agree. There is a game being played. Nothing from Keith which gives me the impression that Keith is going to be very busy um, over the next 24 hours and uh, having a lot of phone calls. It'll be interesting to see what happens over the next 24 hours. Uh, this isn't done yet. I still feel there's going to be a lot of roller coaster rides. Uh, the Mag says, that's the thing about being a Newcastle fan. We always do things the hard way. Been like this since the 1980s. QC, Michael Belloff is one for transparency. Masters and Hoffman are not. Um, it can be. It can't be Newcastle who've messed up the evidence. Surely, uh, says Colin Main. Um, Tar Steve says Brian. Compared to your face last year when you thought it was finished, I still have a tiny bit of hope. But how long will the Saudis wait? Um, yeah, I, I think they are still. Um, th there is still a big, big chance of this going through. I just think, uh, as Steve Hasty says, it's all part of a game. Once the Premier League's realised the amount of that will be raked up in the cat case, they'll wave the white flag. Uh, Jimmy says the Premier League are just playing chess. I personally think the takeover will go through. You just got to be patient, wait and see. Mia Dad has tweeted these words: "There's only one party playing games here," which is interesting. Uh, Chris McCarthy says, "The more I hear about Sir Maximin Morning, let him go. We're all uh, to him. Uh, all we are to him is a paycheck. Why sign a new long-term deal? Then a year later, say you want out? It's a disgrace. Yeah, he is good, but 15 games a season." Uh, Terence, good to see you on Friday. This is the only thing I don't understand is what more evidence is needed. Uh, looking forward to hearing what Keith's got to say, says Tom. How long did it take for Sir John Hall and Co to take over, Steve? Yeah, exactly. A long time. Everton seemed to change manager every year. Rafa might leave Everton before arbitration and the cat case takeover is eventually sorted. You never know. You never know what's in his contract. Uh, thanks as always, both breaking news aside, says Julie. And John Poole says, Premier League not providing evidence. Um... Dan, NUFC, not use this. Can NUFC not use this in the cat as evidence? What would happen if we got relegated? Surely Masters is hoping for this. Would the Saudis want us in the championship? Would it be easier to get the deal done in the championship? Lots of questions. Not many answers, I'm afraid. Newcastle United's takeover hopes have been hit by a hammer blow after their arbitration case was pushed back. Yeah, two have been talking about it for the last 20 minutes, mate. You must be playing catch-up. Ginger Hoskins says, I'm sorry, Newcastle. Lie to a player. Tell them they will be in the top four in four seasons. Every player we sign is lied to. They're betrayed by the club. Not sure the angle you're coming at with there, Ginger. Dan says, so with the arbitration delayed, does that mean the cap will be delayed? Who knows? Um, you're going to have to tune in when you have seen matters over the next week and find out. Uh, Lol, be patient. I'll be 95 before this goes through, says Chris. How old are you, Chris? 94? Uh, Keith says, great show as always, Stephen Holly. Wow. I mean, it, this is just an emotional, emotional roller coaster, Holly. And, and I think people will have seen how upset you were. You've probably ultimately, you know, you, 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 you're gutted, but I still think there's a chance. Do you know what? I'm going to be overly honest. For the past like 20 minutes, I've literally been trying to hold back tears. That's how upset I am by this. Um, I'm trying to obviously get in that mindset, like use the cat case and all that. And 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 honestly, I've got com right. I haven't lost all confidence. I think there's a chance there. My worry is now that it'll follow suit and that'll be delayed, like the arbitration case. And I hope that isn't um, the thing. And I'll be watching the shows and keeping up to date. And no doubt something will happen. But it's it's just so frustrating, like you say, Steve. It's just. One minute it's going through and the next minute it's not. And it's been like this for ages and ages. And we're just so desperate to see Newcastle United fight again, challenge again and do something other than just stay up every year. We've made the drop twice under Mike Ashley, which is a crime for the club the size of Newcastle United. It's disgusting. And all the things we've been through over the years. And I just, we can't go on like this for much longer. And this, this takeover as well is like, the stuff of dreams, you couldn't ask for anything better than this. And any other takeover we got now, yes, we'd be grateful to get Mike Ashley out and move forward, but it, it just wouldn't be the same. And I, I just, I really hope that you're all right and then the cat case will progress and I will be keeping an eye on what Keith's got to say and things like that. But yeah, it is disappointing, but uh, there is a chance then. We, we just want to hope that there's no more delays because the Premier League are clearly playing games here. Or like you said, it could be Newcastle that's done this and 
and hopefully they've got some confidence from somewhere. Lots of positivity in the chat. Uh, Daniel just wants to know if you're okay, Holly. I will be in the morning. <laughs> it's like walking through cement with a Garden of Eden just out of reach, says Life Goals, which is a great way of putting it. Uh, Bill says the cat surely isn't up the Premier League. It's a legal issue. Um, I thought you were going to say up the tree there for some reason. Rachel says, great show. Stay strong, Holly. Holly, do you, gret, do you regret the protest was peaceful? No, not at all. No. I'll answer that for you. Of course not. We don't want bloody riots. There was enough of them in London when, when the England lot were in there. PIF look really hungry for NUFC. Their God hasn't brought them this so far to the now. Keep the faith, guys. Why don't the court just say that the Premier League enough is enough and get it started? Uh, don't forget about your amazing Friday, Holly, says Roger. We'll leave tonight's show there. Fantastic show, as always. Uh, breaking news, of course, if you missed it, is that the arbitration case has been put back to early 2022. Uh, but no news, of course, on the cat case. And don't forget, that is what Keith Patterson said would happen this week. Uh, as, I, as I browse Twitter and see that... Uh, one of the other podcasts is uh, claiming that the in the nose have gone into hiding again. Well, uh, I'll be doing a little video on uh, Twitter just to uh, just to round up my thoughts on this tonight. Uh, I, of course, will be back tomorrow night uh, at the same time, six till seven, uh, with Liam Kennedy. He might be on holiday uh, from his day job, but he's not on holiday from his night job, uh, saying he is uh, back uh, to uh, talk transfers and probably talk takeover. I would imagine as well, six till seven tomorrow. Back to the retro show on Wednesday night uh, when we are looking at games between Newcastle United and Barnsley. Thursday night, we will be looking ahead uh, to the Doncaster game and looking back on another eventful week at St James's Park with Super Mac and Gibbo. And then Friday night, of course, is the Fab Four, which unfortunately will be a pre-record, I'm afraid, only because I'm off to Doncaster. Uh, on Friday night. So uh, we will be doing a pre-record on Thursday to cover that. If uh, those of you who like the true crime stuff, I did a fantastic interview uh, last week with Professor Dick Hobbs. He's a criminologist. He's got a new book out called The Business, talking with thieves, gangsters and dealers. Cracking book, but we interviewed Dick about his uh, rise uh, to uh, to being a professor of criminology. He used to work at uh, Durham. Uh, cracking guy. Great interview well worth uh, tuning into that in the playlist. But uh, Holly, uh, go and uh, lie down in a dark room and don't worry about it. Everything will be all right. And uh, I'll <laughs> see you next Monday. Take care. See you then. Bye. Bye.